Now this is the most important scenario. The only time I would recommend waiting to pay off a loan is... What up guys, this is Kelvin and welcome back to my channel where we discuss financial wellness, mindset therapy, and real estate. And in today's video, I will be answering an age old question. Will closing a loan, like an auto loan or personal loan, have a negative impact towards my credit? AKA, will it tank my scores? I've seen a lot of bad advice about this topic, so I'm here to dispel the rumors and myths. There is no simple answer. However, no worries. I love making the complicated uncomplicated. So stay tuned, I got you. There's truly no greater feeling than fulfilling your purpose and doing what God's called you to do. And one of my biggest passions is helping others. I truly enjoy it. Two ways I've been able to do this is through real estate and also through credit repair. After taking about six months off of credit repair and solely focusing on real estate and helping people save thousands of dollars through refinancing, I now feel like, you know, it's about time to get back on that horse and start helping as many people as possible improve their credit health. As a federally licensed mortgage loan originator, over the past six months alone, I've been focusing more so on helping as many people as possible save thousands of dollars with refinancing. I've done so with great success and I've written hundreds of mortgages, right? But at this point, I feel like it's about time to get back on the horse and focusing more so on helping as many people as possible improve their credit because in the real estate industry, you know, whether you are an MLO like myself or you are a realtor or you're on the other end, right? You're someone who's looking for approval. One of the things that you cannot hide is your credit score. And at Greenscale Credit, we're all about making sure that you are fit financially fit, right? We want to help whip you into shape and ensure that you have great, healthy credit. Now, credit itself should be simple, right? It shouldn't be complicated. And as I said earlier, I love to make the complicated uncomplicated. So to celebrate the relaunch of our credit restoration services, I invite you guys to go ahead and schedule a free credit consultation where I personally will give you a call conduct the credit analysis and audit and make sure that we can put you on the path of having that healthy green credit score. To do so, you can either click the link down in the description below, or you can head on over to our website at greenscalecredit.com to schedule that consultation. Now, of course, this is a limited time offer. So if you're watching this video and you need someone to literally hold your hand and walk you through the process and educate you along the way on how to improve your credit, go ahead and schedule that free consultation so I can give you a call and give you a blueprint for success. Plus, if you stay to the end of this video, I have something special for you. It's going to be an exclusive item that you can only get from me, from moi, from watching this video. So um, trust me, this is going to be a helpful video anyway. So I'm sure you're going to stay tuned. Now, one of the most commonly asked questions I get from my credit repair clients is, hey, I'm thinking about closing this credit card or I'm thinking about paying off this auto loan or personal loan. But so and so told me that if I did so, it would tank my scores. Is this true? Well, the truth of the matter is, yes, it can hurt your scores, but more times than not, it actually won't. So I'm going to go through a couple of quick scenarios to kind of help you understand when it would and when it would not hurt your scores to do so. Now, the most important factor here is going to be your credit report. So the first step is to download a full copy of your trilateral credit report. Now, trilateral just means it's a three-in-one credit report that shows all of the details about each account that's on your credit report with TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, right? You want to look for specifically the age of each account. You want to be looking for the account open date, the date the account was opened, because what you want to do is identify first which of these accounts 
is your oldest account, all right? The reason why this is important is because 15% of your credit score is based on the average age of your credit, also known as the length of your credit history. So when you look at this credit report, you're gonna identify which of these accounts is your oldest account. The next thing I want you to look for is what is your second oldest account. Now we're gonna go into two different scenarios. Let's talk about, for example, an auto loan. Let's say you've been paying on this auto loan for four and a half years, right? You have a 60 month plan, but you wanna pay it off early. You are looking to finally put that payment to rest so you can have a paid off car with no monthly payments. But Joe Smo down the street, or your cousin or your auntie or, or nana or whoever told you not to do it because it will hurt your scores. In scenario one, you looked at your credit report and you identified that this account that you're thinking about paying off is not your oldest account. Let's say you have a student loan or a personal loan or any other loan that is several years older than this auto loan. Well, if that's the case, go ahead and pay it off. It's not gonna make a difference. It literally will not harm your credit report because it is not going to shrink the average age of credit. Now let's talk about the opposite, right? Let's say this is your oldest account. Let's say you're about to pay off that oldest loan, student loan, personal loan, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? Let's say you're about to pay off this loan and you have identified that this is your oldest account. Well, if you were to do that, yes, it could, um, it could shrink the average age of your credit score. Now, it won't make much of a difference, but yes, your scores could take a temporary dip because again, 15% is based on your average age of credit. But because it's only 15% and because that has basically medium impact, it really shouldn't make that much of a difference. And if I were you, I wouldn't avoid potentially paying off a loan just so you can save a few points off of your credit score, right? Because in the end, that's going to cost you continuing to pay all of that interest over the next year or six months or however long you have left on that loan, especially if there's no prepayment penalty. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I've looked at thousands of credit reports and nine times out of 10, either a mortgage, meaning a home mortgage or a student loan will probably be the oldest account. But there is one caveat. Let's say that you looked at your credit report and this loan that you're thinking about paying off is the oldest account. But remember, I told you to also identify the second oldest account. Let's say that this account has been open since January of 2015, and this is your oldest account. Well, if the next oldest account was opened, uh, let's say six months later, then this really shouldn't make any difference, right? So if you go ahead and pay off that loan and you know now this account is shut down and you have another account that was open just a few months later, that means your average age of credit really shouldn't change, right? The only time it'll make a big difference to be technical is if all of your other accounts are very new and this is the only account that you have that has several years of credits. All of a sudden, things started to make sense. And so, you know, if you're someone who has, let's say, only an auto loan and the only other open accounts and only other credit accounts that you have showing on your credit report are two credit cards that you just opened within the last year or two, then yes, you know, your scores could potentially drop. But again, it's only 15%. It's medium impact, and why would you risk, you know, continuing to pay thousands of dollars in interest just to save a few points? You can easily get those points back by simply making positive payments on your accounts. And this is why I'm going to go into another bonus topic that is very related to this is credit cards, right? So not necessarily just credit cards, all revolving debt. So for example, 
uh, even lines of credit, right? If you have a line of credit or a credit card and you're thinking about closing that account, however, uh, I, I would never really suggest closing a credit card account or any revolving account for that matter. Because if you were to pay off a credit card, it's different. Like when you pay off an auto loan or pay off any other loan, when you pay that last balance off, the account is automatically closed. But that's why it's called revolving. Credit cards don't work that way. But let's say you pay off um, a credit card that has been a hindrance. Let's say it has a very high interest rate um, and it's been a rock in your shoe, but you finally paid it off. If you're really worried about you know not having the discipline to pick that car back up and swipe, swipe, swipe <laughs> like nobody's business, I would just recommend cutting up that car. Um, that way you don't have to worry about it, right? You can always ask for a new card if you ever need to use it in the future, but just keep that account open. The reason why I say this, I know I can talk long, but if you were to close a revolving account, it can impact your scores, not just one way, but three ways. Okay. Uh, one of the ways outside of your average age of credit is it could impact the mix of your credit. Credit mix accounts for 10% of your credit scores. So if you add that to your average age of credit, now we're looking at about 25%. Another thing it could impact is your overall credit card utilization, which is 30% of your credit score. Now, let's say in this scenario, you have three credit cards. One of the credit cards has a $5,000 limit. Another has another $5,000 limit. And the third has a $2,000 limit. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you owed $5,000 on one and you paid off that full balance, leaving you with two credit cards that are close to the limit. Now, instead of just leaving this account open, you instead close this account. And now you're left with having two and only two revolving accounts both of which are close to the limit. Now you just went from having an opportunity to improve your credit to now, let's say 30 to 40% uh, percent overall credit usage to now having like nearly 95 or 90% credit usage. Now, again, that's 30% that's of your overall score. So instead, what you should do is leave that account open because again, making the decision to close a credit card is a bad one. When you add up the 30% for the overall credit usage, the 15 for the average age of credit, and also the 10% for credit mix, that makes up 55% of your credit score, which is crazy, right? So under no circumstance do I recommend you to close a credit card. Now to summarize what I said earlier, I would recommend you closing any personal auto or mortgage loan, any loan whatsoever, if you have the opportunity, because it would make a lot more sense to save the thousands of dollars you would save in interest by paying that loan off early, rather than saving yourself the possibility of losing a few points, if that is your oldest account. And, um, you know, obviously the risk reward is right there for you to see. Now, this is the most important scenario. The only time I would actually recommend waiting to pay off a loan is when you're about to apply for a home loan, meaning a mortgage or refinance or anything of the sort. And your scores are somewhere between a 580 and let's say a 680. The reason why I say that is if your scores are between a 580 and a 680, it means that if your scores were to drop, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 points, it could completely change the entire landscape of your approval. Let's say you're looking to refinance and you want to take out some cash because you have a lot of equity in your home to do home improvements or for debt consolidation. Well, the minimum required credit score is a 620. So if you're at a 625 or if you have a 630 middle score, you may want to wait until after you actually apply and have them pull your credit because then you could always come back and tell them you want to or you could pay off the loan 
if there is a DTI issue. Now, what most people don't understand is that when you're dealing with the underwriters, the underwriters always have the ability to waiver or exclude any debt that's on your credit report when you have the ability to pay off that debt. So let's say after you check your credit report and you've identified that this loan you're thinking about paying off is the oldest account and you now understand that this may cause a temporary dip in your credit score a week from now, even a month or two from now, you plan on applying for a home mortgage. You want to wait until after you apply and after the credit pool, because they only need to check your credit once when you're applying for a home, unless of course you are building a home and it's gonna take, you know, 10 months to build the home, then they will check it again, you know, 10 months later after the house is built. Another real estate related example is, let's say you're trying to apply to get approved for your first home. There are different programs that have higher or lower interest, and most importantly, whether or not you're required to carry PMI or MIP. There's always about three different loan programs that you're gonna be considering. If you are a vet, then it's gonna be VA, right? VA is always gonna have the lowest interest rates, plus they're very lenient on DTI and also credit score. Then you have FHA, and conventional. Those are the two most popular. Well, with FHA, the minimum credit score is 620, right? But that's for cash. However, you can actually have a score as low as 580 and you can still get in a home with an FHA loan. But the problem with FHA is they require you to carry that pesky mortgage insurance that PMI is going to be an extra couple hundred dollars. But again, I will reiterate, none of this matters if your account is not the oldest account because it will not impact your scores at all. Now, with that being said, I do have a gift for you guys for, you know, being so patient with me and, you know, sitting through this whole video. I really, of course, hope you did find something valuable without further ado. I want you to go ahead and head on over to offer.greenscalecredit.com or click the link down in the description below to go ahead and get your free copy of my ebook, which is called The Seven Secret Ways to Improve Your Credit Scores. I think you guys will love it. Um, I've had clients literally improve their scores by over 100 points just by taking these seven secrets and putting them into action. Now, let's help the algorithms push this video out so more people like you and I can see this information and put it to use. You can do so by giving this video a thumbs up, meaning a like, a physical like, um, and also comment and always subscribe if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss out any of this new content. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time of the day it is. Thanks for watching.